for the cotton ceiling. I want to say first that I'm really grateful that we're having a session just for lesbians. It's my, my life, I've never seen that, really, I don't think. Um, in the feminist movement, and I don't want to say this, but it can happen that we feel a little bit silenced as well as in the world around, so it's really important and really grateful to figure out to have this opportunity. So I'm going to talk about the clash of rights that exists between the movement for trans rights, which we call trans activism, and the movement for lesbian rights, and how and why these two groups and these two ideologies are not compatible, can never be compatible, and the reason why when lesbians support trans rights, they actually go against their own interests uh, and their own rights as lesbians. So there's been a lot of talk about the clash that exists between trans women and, and women, and uh, very often the right, we talk about the right to access or to deny access to women-only spaces. When we talk about lesbians and in that context, the women-only space whose access is being debated is our bodies. So we are immediately talking about sexual violence here. Um, also, as an introduction, I want to speak about language, and thank you, Sally, for introducing that. I'm going to clarify what, what language I'm going to use. Um, so to enable a clear political feminist analysis based on sex, not gender, based on material reality, not ideology, and as a feminist statement of resistance, I think it's important that we start opposing the use of queerified language and that we drop the practice of preferred pronouns altogether. <laughs> As this, they are imposed on us, on women particularly, to gaslight us and to force us into submission. I'm not going to do that to myself, and I'm not going to do that to you. So, for the term that usually is trans women, I'm going to use um, the term man, or identify as trans, or whatever. Um, I will use um, the pronouns associated to someone's biological sex. Only, <clears throat> and I think it's urgent that we start speaking in those terms because we are these terms are forbidden to us. Um, <clears throat> so cotton ceiling. Um, do I want to explain to you? No, I don't. <laughs> I would like to show you. Uh, so here we go. Our genital preferences transphobic. So this is a man who identifies as a lesbian. It's called Riley. He's not really interested if any genital preferences are transphobic. To be honest, he wants to know if lesbians are being transphobic when they don't want to sleep with him. <laughs> so, you know, this is a little bit <coughs> not unclear, isn't it? Um, so I, I've picked up a few, um, just so that you get an idea if you've never been, uh, you know, Exposed to these, there are hundreds more online. Please have your own, you know, on your own time, have your own research. Have you considered not being a violent trans misogynist and opening yourself up to trans women, opening yourself up sexually to trans women? Um, so this is McKinnon, <coughs> uh, who talks about the times where cis lesbian, that means just lesbian, uh, get over that genital hang up and realize that she can cope just fine with a penis in her vagina. And here, uh, yeah, somebody's saying that if you're, you're a lesbian and you only like vagina, you're not a lesbian, you're a turf. I can carry on, but yeah, you know, I think you get the idea. So, the cotton ceiling, now I'm going to tell you a bit more, um, was a term invented by trans activist uh, and a porn performer, and he used it to describe the difficulties faced by men who identify as trans lesbians in being accepted as real lesbians. <laughs> Plenty of quotes everywhere. Um, they found that lesbians were okay for men to identify as lesbian to join their communities, although I doubt that, but somehow that lesbians were reluctant to choose them as sexual partners, and we know that 80% of trans people in general are non-op, which means that they have their genitals, which means that in the case of men who identify as Trans lesbians, they have a penis, so that might be why. Um, but not only. Um, so the term cotton ceiling is um, copied on the term glass ceiling, so we're all feminists and we know what the glass ceiling is. So I'm going to show you a little illustration from Sophia, who I think is here, from the sisters. Excuse uh, me, could, could we ask the previous speakers to, to move? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. So, I don't know if you can read, but I think we all know what the, the glass ceiling is. It describes this invisible barrier that women face in, at work to attain a higher position in the field of work because men are gatekeeping positions of power for themselves. 
Um, the cotton ceiling <laughs> refers to the knicker of the lesbian. So the cotton is the cotton of the underwear. The cotton ceiling is the barrier that male who identify as lesbians struggle to penetrate. This barrier is seen as denying their validity as real women, as a lesbian only has sexual you know, experience with lesbian would make him a real lesbian. Lesbians who are not consenting are accused of using their genitals to gatekeep womanhood, denying trans lesbian their right to be real lesbians via accessing lesbians sexually. So I'm using the term consensual because it's, um, you know, the lesbian has to agree whether it's under pressure, whether under like coercion, whether under actual violence, for the sexual relation to validate that man magically. Um, the lesbian explained that they did not want to have sexual relationship with people with penises, so the term was rebranded, girl dick, lady stick, lady penis, and many others. Because in this logic, the penis, in virtue of being attached to, um, to a male who identifies as female, automatically becomes a female organ. <laughs> <laughs> Lesbians who still refuse to uh, consider trans lesbian as sexual partners are called TERFs and other really nice yeah. vagina fetishes, Nazis. Right. <clears throat> So, because we are lesbians and we are privileged uh, compared to men who identify as women, <laughs> because we're cis and we're not trans, we are said that we oppress men who identify as lesbian, and the way we oppress them is because we refuse to have sex with them. That's it but it goes further than this, it's, it's really quite insane. So we are told that trans women are real women, Therefore, if lesbians refuse to have sex with people with penises who call themselves lesbians, we cannot be lesbians at all. I've done a little drawing so you can understand it. Um, right. Men who identify as lesbian are real lesbians, as in trans women are women, trans women are women. Females cannot be real lesbians, unless they have sex with men who identify as lesbians, because they are real women, and then it makes them real women too. So, if I did lose you, it's no more... <laughs> The reversal is complete, yeah? So, so has this cotton ceiling, as we've seen with the screenshot on Twitter, happens to us all the time online? Um, and we are also told by the very men who do it that it doesn't happen, it doesn't exist. You know, women are not being coerced, but you're tough. And um, it's, it's a form of gaslighting, right? It, this is emotional abuse. And I wanted to see if this... Um, went further than online, I wanted to see what was going on on the ground, what was the implications for them in their, you know, life outside of the internet. So, um, you know, on LGBT groups or on lesbian dating sites. And um, so I started this research, which I've got here, and we are selling at the store there as well. Um, um, and I set up a survey of 30 questions that I sent to women-only group and lesbian-only groups. 80 lesbians responded to that survey in five days, so it was really easy to find. Um, and I'm really grateful for the women who shared their story and trusted me with them. Um, the sample that I've used does not claim at any moment to be representative of all lesbians, but because the aim was to represent the voice of lesbians that are silenced, um, and give, gather the, the remaining, the, sorry, the missing evidence. As we know, Stonewall, whose research claimed to be representative, whose research claimed to be objective, do not represent any of those views or stories. We are instead ignored, dismissed, or demonized. Um, so I'm going to go quickly through the findings. Um, I don't know how much, do, how much time do I have left? Um, so the finding um, subjects that um, there's a huge pressure in LGBT groups for, for lesbians to accept without question the queer ideology and the mantra that trans women are women and trans women are women. Um, and for lesbians specifically, it means that a lesbian who define lesbianism as same-sex attraction at the exclusion of people who have or had penises, this is now considered a form of hate speech. <laughs> And this is violently punished. So 50% of the respondents have been excluded from their LGBT groups. 66% of the respondents have been uh, intimidated, received threats in their, in their LGBT group, the group that are supposed to protect them and support them uh, with all sorts of, um, you know, 
example here of abuse, death threat. So, very often, this happened also in their real life. Some women lost their jobs. Some women were physically removed from their groups by men who identify as trans, etc. Um, and it leads to social isolation because we know when women are threatened online, they are very less likely to go on to events uh, that happen in the real world. Um, because, you know, they're scared. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what we see also is that being silent in group does not free lesbians from the pressure. Instead, they are questioned quite relentlessly um, to reveal whether they would or would not date trans women, and sometimes a particular trans women. So the pressure is huge, uh, and it creates a culture of terror. It leads to women policing each other in order to not appear to be a turf for the rest of the group. Um, it's really intensifying at uh, the moment, as anyone not actively embracing the trans ideology through, by, for example, the naming of pronouns, is suspected of silent turfing. <laughs> so, lesbian dating sites are infiltrated by men. So these men sometimes pose as lesbians, sometimes you know they identify as trans women, sometimes they identify as straight men, sometimes they pass as women, sometimes they don't, sometimes they try, sometimes they don't try. Uh, but there's quite a few of them. Again, this was collected very quickly on the internet. Um, so this one, for example, says that he's a gentleman in his trouser, so he's announcing he's non-op, he's got a penis. And this one has a beard. Um, so for lesbians, the, the lesbian dating site is a very unsafe space uh, because you know they could end up, you know, having a date with somebody who turns out to be a man without them knowing. Um, what the women were saying uh, is that this constant pressure is a form of psychological coercion and leads lesbians to feeling pressurized to accept men who identify as trans women as sexual partner and they feel less legitimate to say no in the case that they you know, are in that situation. The, the situation is online, everywhere and relentless. Um, there was also some sexual violence, so here you can see this quote, homosexuality doesn't exist, yeah, and I owe it to my trans sister to unlearn my genital confusion so I can enjoy letting them penetrate me. This was told to a woman in, in a LGBT group by another woman, yeah, <coughs> who was probably straight, um, <laughs> whether she knew it or not. Lesbians have been subjected so to a wide variety of sexual violence by men who identify as trans women. They were reported by women from every age range, but the younger generation, so 18 to 24, seem to be particularly targeted. Uh, perpetrated have used queer theory mixed with guilt tripping to pressure, justify or excuse sexual violence. The sexual violence was committed in, uh, by men uh, who identify as trans women uh, in a very typical male pattern of aggression. So, it's an example of uh, <coughs> coercion, online grooming, some of the girls were underage when uh, this happened to them, sexual harassment, assault, rape by deception and rape by physical force. It happened in public places, clubs, women's toilet. Again, we're told it never happens, but it does. Um, unwanted sexual touching, acquaintance rape scenario, you know, whether the lesbian were vulnerable, unable to leave or drunk maybe. Uh, during dates, when the women withdrew consent or were then persuaded or forcibly raped. Um, so I've put a few stories here where you can see, um, I thought I would be called a transphobe and it would be wrong for me to turn down a trans woman who wanted to exchange nude picture and this young lesbian felt pressure to sleep with a trans woman to prove that she's not a turf. Um, and here you've got the story um, of this woman who was raped when she was um, under 18 as well. Um, I want to conclude um, by talking about the political implications for lesbians. And, um, <coughs> and I want to, you know, just say what is a lesbian? So for us at Get the L Out, and for you I hope as well, a lesbian is a woman who is exclusively attracted to women. In my university, Bangor University, a lesbian is a person who identifies as a woman who is sexually attracted to another person who also identifies as a woman. <laughs> it could mean anything, it could mean anyone. And this is the ideology that every LGBT group, communities, organizations in this country and in the West 
uh, promotes and supports. And effectively, it erased the definition of lesbianism from language because it now includes men. And the problem is not only the erasure from language, it's enforced on the body of lesbians. When lesbians are denied the right to experience lesbianism, we are witnessing a form of rape culture and a form of conversion therapy. Heterosexuality is enforced upon lesbian, and today it's called queer, and it's called progressive. <coughs> so because a lesbian is a woman who is exclusively attracted to women, and because a lesbian who tells a man who identifies as a lesbian I'm not having sex with you, she's effectively saying, you're not a woman, you're a man, she is denying his validity. In the trans activist movement now, we now, we now have a movement who claim that lesbians' bodies and sexuality are a tool of validation for male. And if we understand this, you see that it's why it's so important for, for trans activism to silence and demonize lesbian who dissent, because the lesbian who say no is a threat, she has to be taken down. Individual, individual men who ID as lesbian, as well as trans activism as a whole, relies on invading lesbian bodies for their validation. Lesbian erasure from language and practice, our erasure and colonization of our body is literally a question of life and death for the existence and validation of the trans identity and therefore of the whole trans movement. And this is what the cotton ceiling is really about. And I'm going to leave you with this picture of these um, trans women. So these men who identify as trans who walk at a dike march, I can't remember the location, with baseball bats. Um, painted with the trans flag as a, you know, threat of violence against lesbians. Thank you.